Hello, everyone. My name is Ariana Quinones, and the song that I'm going to be singing today is Even When It Hurts by Hillsong.
While we stand for the reading of God's word, it's going to be found in Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. We are going to have a series, uh, our series Countdown to Eternity, as I said in my commercial, and in case you didn't hear it before, we're going to be looking at three facets in Revelation. We're going to be looking at the one world law. We're going to be looking at the one world economy. And we are also going to be looking at the one world religion. That is what we are focusing on these next three days, these next three Sabbaths. Let's bar uh, Hebrews chapter 11. The Bible says, let's read it together. By faith, Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. When you do what God tells you to do, not only do you save yourself, you save your entire house. Please look at somebody and tell them it's not about you. It's not about you. It is about your kids, it's about your mother, it's about your father, it's about your husband, it's about your wife, it's about anybody and everybody whom you care about. The Bible says, the Bible says, the Bible says, I don't say this, the Bible says, accept the Lord Jesus, accept him, accept him, receive him, and you shall save you and your house together. Can you say amen? Now please observe, how many people were saved during the time of the flood? How many people? Anybody? How many people were lost? Everyone else. Let that soberly, let that idea meditate as we pray. Father God, please anoint these lips, mind, and heart, that the words that I say may be acceptable unto thee, and touch the ears of those who would hear your word in Jesus' precious name. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. You might be wondering why am I starting off so quickly. It is because I'm looking at the time, and I know what I have to share with you. Okay? I know what I have to share with you. Now, what I want you to understand is that at the end of it, this message needs to end with this. Jesus is coming. Did you hear me? Did you hear me? Jesus is coming. All right? But we are not going to be looking at our normal signs for Jesus Christ coming. We're not going to be. Why? Because you guys are already masters at that. Most of you have second degree black belts in, in, what, in, in, in the signs of Christ coming. Y'all are masters. Y'all could teach classes in that. All right? Those are great. But my brothers and my sisters, I want you to know we are well past that. We're well past the signs in Matthew chapter 24. We are now in the signs of Revelation chapter 13. Now, why has God given us prophecy? Number one, Isaiah tells us it is so that way we know that God is real. How so? Anybody can tell you what already happened in the past. Can you say amen to that? But who can tell you what's going to happen in the future? The interesting thing is we should. We should know what's going on. We should not be surprised about what has occurred. We should have been ready for it. But as often is the case, the people of God are not ready for the events that are coming upon this earth, even though God has already said they were going to happen. Because we are more interested in what we believe and in what we like than in what God has to say. And trust me, we will find anybody to agree with us. If you don't think so, please remember the prophecies of Daniel. Which prophecy? Did God tell the Jewish nation when Jesus was going to come? Yes or no? Did God not tell the people of Israel that 490 years into the future... From the decree to restore and rebuild Jerusalem, the Messiah, the Prince, would come. Yes or no? How many of them were ready? Even wise men from the East, and we don't know how many there were. Wise men from the East, they were ready. And please remember, Herod and the Sadducees and the Pharisees, none of them were ready. Please note. Observe. God has never allowed his church to be caught off guard. Yet, many of us were surprised. 
The Bible says, the Spirit of Prophecy says, Testimonies for the Church, Volume 4. I would ask that you read along with me. The lapse of time has brought great changes. The lapse of time has brought great changes. Light has increased and has become widespread. By a thorough, by a what, folks? Thorough, by a what, folks? Thorough investigation of the prophecies. We, we, we understand where we are in this world's history. And we know for a certainty that the second coming of Christ is near. The result of these investigations must be brought before the world through the press. What does the spirit of prophecy say that we should do with our understanding of Bible prophecy? Should we keep it to ourselves and just preach about Jesus Christ and his love and his mercy? No. We should share it. That is why we are here. Do I say don't preach about Jesus Christ and his love? Preach that too. Can you say amen to that? But we are here for this purpose. That is why God raised us up that way we would have a message to share and it's called the third angel's message can you say amen to that Matthew chapter 24 Jesus told us that about those days the days of Noah please look quickly verse 38 and 39 the Bible says that in those days in the days of Noah what were they doing before the flood anybody tell me That's what they were doing. Anybody guess what people are doing now? What does 2 Timothy say, chapter 3? Same thing. Observe. The Bible does not mince words. It says that in the last days, in what days? Last days. Evil men shall wax worse and worse. The Bible says that people will be heady, high-minded, treasonous, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Jesus says the same thing. The Bible does not disagree with itself. He goes on to say, Jesus does. They were doing this until the day that Noah entered into what? They were doing it. All the while, Noah is preaching. They were doing this. All the while, Noah was building. They were doing this. They were doing what they always do. They were doing what they regularly do. They were doing what they thought life consisted of. How long, folks, did Noah preach? Anybody can tell me? So don't complain about the length of my sermons. All right? My, my, brother, my brother was preaching for 120 years. And guess what? It was the same message. Want to know what the message was? Get in the ark. Do me a favor. Tell somebody, get in the ark. Just tell somebody, get in the ark. Get in the ark. That was the message of Noah's time. Please notice, that was Noah's present truth. Noah wasn't talking about repentance. Noah wasn't talking about the coming of the Messiah. Yet he knew all of those things. How did he know those things? Remember Adam? They lived together at the same time. Adam hadn't died yet. Adam got to over 900 years old. Adam saw Noah. He didn't preach the Messiah would come. He preached the message. The message was, get in the ark. Why? Because that was the message for that time. Why? Because a flood is coming. Do me a favor, tell somebody, a flood's coming. A flood is coming. And if you ain't in the ark, you're going to drown. Pastor, how can you say that? I don't say that. What does the Bible say? The Bible says, read it, read it if you want to, Genesis chapter 10 through 12. The waters did not fall, did not stop rising and falling until when? Until every person who had the breath of life in them was what? Wiped out dead. 
please observe, when God says something is going to happen and you don't do what you need to do to get ready for that, it's on you. It's not on God. This is present truth. Revelation chapter 13, verse 7, the Bible says, this is what's going to happen. And it was given unto him, who him? That is the beast of the first, the first beast. You know it very well, very carefully. Who is that? That is the Roman Catholic Church. You know that. I'm not talking about an individual. I'm talking about an organization. I'm talking about an entity. When I'm speaking about nations, I'm not speaking about individuals. I'm speaking about a group, a system, a way of thinking. When I'm talking about that, now, are there heads in these people? Yes. Are there leaders? Yes. There always will be. But God is speaking about a system and a group of people that will be doing things at the end that is going to impact the entire world. And here it says it's the entire world. Notice, please, giving him power to make war with who? The saints. And to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds, tongues, nations, and people. Now, I have something that I would like you to remember. How many of you have read the book of Genesis? Raise your hand. Anybody? Do you all remember when Joseph came to the king, to Pharaoh, and Joseph started speaking to Pharaoh? Do you remember that? He got out of prison, he got out of jail, and Pharaoh told him his dream. And by the way, how many times did Pharaoh have the same dream? How many times? Two times, right? Once of them, it was big wheat, right? And the other one was cows, right? But it was essentially the same dream. How many dreams? Two, but it was the same dream, yes or no? By the way, how many dreams are there in Daniel? Two, same dream, different things, right? Hmm. What did Joseph tell Pharaoh the reason for the two dreams were? It's established. It's done. God says this is going to happen. So if God repeating himself twice means it's established, it's done, why then does God repeat himself four times? Every nation, every kindred, every tongue, excuse me, over all kindreds, tongues, kindreds, tongues, and nations. I don't know where I got four, but notice here it says three times. And this prophecy is repeated twice. Once in Revelation 13, 7, and the other one in Daniel chapter 7, 25. And in Daniel 7, 25, he says, and he, we know that is the little horn power, which is the first beast of Revelation chapter 13. He shall speak great words against the Most High, shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of times. What then does God mean when he repeats himself more than twice? It's more than established. This is a fact. This is what's going to happen. Does God want this to happen? It's not the case. God has given to us free will. Can you say amen to that? God has given us the opportunity to choose what to do. Can you say amen to that? I'm going to cook if that heat keeps going higher. Could somebody please turn it off for me, please? Thank you. Appreciate it. The Bible says, the Bible says that God has given to every man freedom to choose. But what he does not do is remove the consequences of those choices. And those choices are going to lead to a one world government in where God's people are going to be persecuted. But pastor, it says saints. Yes. But aren't saints in heaven? Who told you that? Have you read 1 Corinthians? Have you read it? If you have, then you know that the saints are here in on earth. The Bible says anybody who worships God, do you worship God? Raise your hand. Do you believe in God? Raise your hand. And finally, do you worship God in his temple? Raise your hand. I'm not saying anything about Zoomers or anybody else. God, I'm not, not, not going there today. I'll go there in a couple of other days. The Bible says, the Bible says, the Bible says that saints are here on earth. Can you say amen? Those are the people who are going to be persecuted. 
Selected Messages, book three. Can you read it with me? Could you? Let's read it together. The persecutions of Protestants by what? Romanism, by which the religion of Jesus Christ was almost annihilated, will be more than rivaled when Protestantism and popery are what? Combined. How soon are we to this? I present to you the, the trifecta that you all saw and you all watching in the United States of America. The one that symbolizes a man is humanism. It is not atheism because a lot of humanists believe in a God or in some type of spiritual entity. They just don't believe that the Bible is authoritative. Did you hear my word? Did you hear what I said? They believe science trumps religion and personal issues take a side to whatever is happening to the world. They have a globalist agenda. A what? And I don't mean that in the way, in the sense that globalism controlling the world alone. No. I mean they care about the earth, the environment. Believe it or not, this is their religion. I'll get more into that some other time. The second one is Protestantism. Is what? That is the P with the cross. Okay? That is the official sign of Protestantism. These are the people that you saw march again on Washington, D.C. I'm not saying all of them. I'm not. I know some of them. Not all of them marched for the same reason. But the vast majority, the ones who orchestrated a lot of this, the ones who have been pulling the strings on Donald Trump, egging him on, are these people. These are the dominionists. Who are they? These are the dominionists. This is a very interesting group of people. Okay? Very, very interesting. A good story to share with you about them. Okay? And my note on the dominionists is gone. All right. And then the last one, you guys recognize it. Who are they? This is the Roman Catholic Church. And we all know the Roman Catholic Church. Here is the thing. Every single one of these people want to control the world. Did you hear what I said? And they're on track. Let's start with the Dominionist. Dominionists believe in what's called reclaiming the seven mountains. What it does reclaiming the seven mountain mean? Reclaiming the seven mountain means reclaiming seven areas of influence. And my notes are gone on this guy. And I, off the top of my head, I can't even remember what his name is. But this gentleman, he started the Christian prophetic movement. What did he start? The Christian prophetic movement. From which... Many of today's Christian leaders on TV all ascribe and follow. He believes that in order for God to reign upon the earth, the church, the what? Church needs to control all areas of business, all areas of government, all areas regarding family, religion, media, internet, blah, blah, blah. Education and entertainment. This is their function. They saw Donald J. Trump as a, are you ready for it? Cyrus. Why Cyrus? Cyrus, if you remember in the Bible, was not a Jew. Yet, he liberated the Jews from bondage. Yes or no? He was not a Jew. But he recognized his prophetic role in prophecy. Notice, was Cyrus's name written before he was born? Yes or no? Yes, you can find it, you can find it in Isaiah 45. It's in the Bible. God positioned him to open up the doors, that the doors would be unlocked. 
Therefore, everything, just about, <laughs> just about, that Mr. Pre former President Donald J. Trump did was all regarding moving this agenda forward. When he pulled out of the climate accord of the, of the Kyoto Treaty, of the Paris Accord, why was that? To move government and put the United States first. America, anybody? First. Because America is supposed to lead the world with everything. And he is, was seen as a flawed instrument of God. Like who? They compared him to David, which David had a problem, yes or no, yet he was still being used. These people seem to have lost. What did I say? Have they lost? If you know prophecy, you know that they may have lost a battle, but they didn't lose the war. Karl Schwab. He is the leader for the World Economic Forum. You know these 17 points, these 17 different in the issues, these 17 different areas of sustainable, uh, of, of achieve sustainable goals. You, un you, you know most of them. Let me give them to you in synthesis by the World Economic Forum. And she could read the words because it'll just be words. Okay. Okay. Hold on. Oops. Sorry. Okay. Now, some people will say that the World Economic Forum is just a think tank. World Economic Forum is no longer a think tank. It is the controlling agenda within the United Nations. Please observe that no longer are nations called nations in the United Nations. They are now called anybody, anybody, anybody? States. Which is bigger, a nation or a state? Why, why are all the world governments now called states? Because they're subservient to the United Nations. Let's move on. Do you think I'm exaggerating? Here is an interview. Now, some of you have gotten so many videos from me. As you know, I've been doing research on this like nobody's business. So this, is be, this might be interesting for some of you. China is one of the one of the founding members of the United. China yes. signed up to the UN Charter. China is member uh, signed up to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. There are different understanding to this issue. What China has said is, uh, by the way, the number of uh, non-governmental organizations in China have also been growing rapidly yes. since the, the, according to the latest uh, Human Rights White Paper released by the Chinese government. What China says is, look, the UN Charter 
enshrines the sovereignty of countries, mm -hmm. equality of countries, and the non-interference of each other's internal affairs. Yes. So these are the fundamental principles of uh, international relations. So yes. if there are human rights dialogue, fine, China is actively participating, but if there are human rights, uh, if there are interference, what is seen as interference in China's internal affairs under the pretext of human rights, that would That's be, a good a, point. Not be accepted. The, yeah. the counter argument was articulated by Kofi Annan, the UN mm -hmm. Secretary General, who mm -hmm. said, we made a mistake mm -hmm. in talking about non-intervention or sovereignty in absolute terms. That might have made sense 30 or 40 years ago. In a world today that is so interdependent, just take the environment alone. Mm -hmm. To say state sovereignty trumps every other consideration. I know at the other end, you could have a real problem if you say, well, there is no state sovereignty. But to take refuge in a kind of absolute state sovereignty in a world that's so independent economically, environmentally, militarily, security-wise, that's also a road I think that China itself doesn't want to go down. Um, I understand. I think it's a very inter interesting point because there was a recent movie called The Wandering Earth and there there was an international government, a united government. Uh, but, you know, whether that's going to happen anytime soon, nobody, want, nobody knows. And from what we're seeing, it seems that the United Nations role has been put into doubts, especially yes. by yes. one of the key founders. I think although there are areas where sovereignty should step slightly aside in terms of, uh, for instance, when there is a U.S an endorsed intervention that then there is no sovereignty to speak right. of oh, I think. but but at this but at this moment when these are the rules that everybody have sure. discussed when countries are still operating very much along these lines um, how should we keep a balance so when when to back to your question about moral leadership on the part of china let's take the environmental issue i think if we could hopefully agree that preserving the planet and, and uh, a, a habitat that we can all live in is a moral question. It's a question of right and wrong. And that means subordinating other priorities to this one. China is in a position to take moral leadership in that sense of moral leadership, precisely because of its, its recognition that it, it makes no sense to have enormous economic growth if we can't breathe the air. Mm -hmm. So I hope you heard and understand that, again, the idea between nations is no longer possible. Now we are states, and everything is subservient to the SDGs, the Systematic Development Goals, okay, the Sustainable Developmental Goals. What are the Sustainable Developmental Goals? I invite you to come next Sabbath, and let's study a little bit about them. But what about the Roman Catholic Church? Do they have one? Yes, they do. It's called Laudato Si. Go. And let them explain it for, you, for us. How about that? Francis has written a letter addressed to every person on this planet, urging us all to protect the Earth, our common home. In the letter, he says, The Earth is God's gift to us, full of beauty and wonder, where the fruits of the Earth belong to everyone. But what we see today is that our common home has never been so hurt and mistreated as it has been in the last 200 years. We have developed at a greater speed than we could ever have imagined. We have treated the Earth like it has an unlimited supply of resources, taking more than our fair share from most people on the planet, as well as future generations to come. We have stripped the Earth of its natural forests, contaminated the Earth's waters, its land and its air. Plants and species are becoming extinct at an alarming rate. The Earth, our home, is beginning to look more and more like an immense pile of filth. Our increasing use of polluting fossil fuels, especially coal, oil and gas, is helping to drive climate change, which is one of the biggest challenges we face today. Climate change affects us all. But it is the poorest communities who suffer the most. We are now at crisis point 
where the future of our common home is under threat. And despite this crisis, there seems to be no slowdown in the lifestyles of the rich nations. Enormous gaps between the rich and the poor continue to rise. Between those who are trapped in poverty with few or no resources, and those who are consuming and wasting at an ever-increasing rate, leaving a trail of waste and destruction. Our digital world is also polluting us with noise and distractions, stopping us from learning how to live wisely, to think deeply, and to love generously. Real relationships are replaced with virtual friendships, which we can choose to accept or reject, making us dissatisfied with true, deep relationships, or can give rise to a new sense of isolation. Yet, despite all of this, all is not lost. Young people demand change. Young people want to build a better future, which takes seriously the environmental crisis and the sufferings of the poor. So we can change. We can make a new start. To protect our common home, we need a common plan. The whole human family needs to work together so that we may sow beauty, not pollution and destruction. Our use of polluting fossil fuels also needs to be replaced without delay. And we need to stop treating the world's resources as an object for profit, with no thought on how our actions might affect the environment or future generations. So let's put love for the world and love for our neighbor into action by living together in harmony, listening to one another, caring for nature, and getting involved with society and politics. Let's undergo an eco-conversion in which we listen to the cry of the earth and the cry of the poor. This means taking seriously things like avoiding the use of plastic and paper, reducing water waste, separating rubbish, and using public transport as a part of our calling to protect creation. But more urgently, we need to slow down on how much we consume and throw away. We can find great joy and freedom in living simply, rather than always on the lookout for what we do not have. We are capable of these changes and making a new start. So let us make that start today. Signed, Pope Francis. Laudato Si, a letter from Pope Francis on care for our common home. Have you noticed any similarities between Laudato Si and Sustainable Development Goals? Have you noticed anything similar? Well, what is the difference between the two of them? Simple. Who's in control? Laudato Si, it's the Pope. SDGs, it's the United Nations. So which one of the two will have control? Do you know? Spirit of Prophecy tells us about what's going to happen in the future. And she, she writes in Last Day Events, page 146, in cases where we are brought before the courts, we are to give up our, anybody? Rights. Unless, 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 unless it brings us in collision with God's commands. Okay? With God. It is not our rights we are pleading for, but God's right to our service. Therefore, for example, if the law requires you to wear a mask, what should you do? Don't say that God, whatever. You're not violating the law of God by wearing a mask. Does that make sense, yes or no? Where it does not conflict with the word of God, the spirit of prophecy tells us, do it. Why? Because she knew what we were going to be going through. Did anybody think that we would, might be fined if you don't wear a mask? Did anybody think that there would come a day when you would be fined for not going home even though you haven't committed a crime? Did anybody think that there would come a time when you would be told your business has to close down? But who's going to pay my rent? Who's going to pay my mortgage? Who's going to pay all of these bills? I don't know. But he got to close it. Anybody? Apparently she knew something. 
Daniel 11, verse 40, the Bible says, how soon are we to that? Revelation 11 and Daniel 11, notice they repeat themselves. And at the time of the what? Shall the king of the south push at him? Why do I put this? Because some people believe secularism is the king of the south. Well, if you believe the king of the south is secularism, Egypt, well, then here you go. And the king of the north. Who do some people believe the king of the north is? Anybody? The Vatican, the papacy. Shall come against him like a whirlwind with chariots, horsemen, and with many ships. Shall enter into the countries and shall overflow and pass over. And question, question. At the time of the what? At the time of the what? I need to say, I, I, I hope, anybody know when the time of the end began? Anybody? 1798. Are we living in the time of the end, therefore? Yes or no? Supposed to happen in our time. If you don't think so, Revelation eleven fourteen. How many woes are there in Revelation? Three. How many? Remember, I already covered this. The second woe is past, and behold, the what? Third woe happens right after the sixth trumpet sounds. Are we living in the time of the sixth trumpet? Yes or no? It has to happen in our time. Revelation 13, the Bible says, the Bible says that the Protestantism will rise up again. This defeat that you saw happen, the impeachment, don't be fooled. It's not the end of the war. It's a battle. It comes back up. How do you know? Because I know what the Bible says. Revelation 13, 14, read it with me. And deceives them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the? Saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. Does Protestantism rise again, yes or no? Yes, they do. Don't be fooled. Revelation 17, 17. Remember what God said. For God hath put it in there to what? And to? And give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God shall be. Will this happen? Yes or no? If you don't think so, when you're outside of the ark and it's raining on you, don't blame me. We're almost done, folks. 12, 19, we're almost done. The problem that we have had, and this is why I stopped being, believe it or not, I used to be a Democrat. And then I became a Republican. And then I read the spirit of prophecy. Can you read this with me? Would you read it with me? There is a danger decided danger for all who shall link themselves up with the political parties of the world. There is a fraud on both sides. I'm going to get kicked off this island. I know that. God has not laid upon any of our people the burden of linking up with either party. We are under Christ's banner. And everyone who names the name of Christ is to depart from all iniquity. Doesn't mean that being in a party is sin. Just means that that's what your focus is. So, sorrow and trial will come. The faith of everyone is being tested. But our Lord is truth. He is love. And his scepter stretches over the universe. Surprises awaits anybody? We know not what Political crisis will come next. But in regard to the political agitators, what did she say? If you think this is hard, let me see if I make it till next Sabbath. Agitators. The, world, the word of the Lord to us is, read it with me, go not ye after them. True wisdom will not lead us to follow the example of the foolish rich man of the parable. True wisdom is revealed in seeking first the kingdom of God and his what? Too many of us 
have sided with a party, not realizing that both parties are culpable. Both parties have done what we are in now. Let's see what happens next Sabbath. Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. Here's the good news. Are you ready for it? 12.1. At that time, at what time? Michael shall stand up. The great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. There shall be a time of trouble such as there never was. There was since there was a nation even to the same time. And at that time thy people shall be what? Everyone that shall be found what? And if God repeats the prophecy twice, it means it's Revelation 13, 8. Read it with me. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the lamb slain, slain from the foundation of the world. God says, I am capable, I am more than able, I am more than powerful enough to take you through this time of tribulation and bring you forth unscathed. That's what God says. If your name is written in the Lamb's book of life, you should be calm. If your name ain't there, excuse my grammar, if your name is not there, what are you waiting for? Some, some of my brothers, I know they're going to send me a message and tell me that the tribulation period happens, but that the church is raptured. I want you to show me where the church is raptured. Because here in Revelation 7, which they use in verse 9, they use it because it's in verse 9. They say that this is the church, that the church is raptured because it's on Mount Zion. They forget to read verse 14. The church is in Mount Zion. Okay? They have washed their clothes with white robes. They have white robes on and palms in their hands. Verse 14 says who these people are. These are they which, what? Came out of great tribulation and have washed their, what? Robes and made them white in the, what? There is only one king. There is only one Lord. There is only one president. There is only one leader. And he has decided that the kingdoms of this world shall be the kingdoms of his son, Jesus Christ. And nobody can annul that. My brothers and sisters, I invite you, the, God invites you, Revelation chapter 22, verse 10, saying that the time is at hand. Verse 17, the spirit and the bride say what? Come. And let him that hear it say what? Come. And let him that is thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. God is inviting you to make your decision with Christ. God is inviting you, and I would encourage you, speak to me. Tell me. Let me know. If you need to be rebaptized, we can get that done. If you want to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, Savior through profession of faith, let me know. Time is running out. Would you bow your heads with me for a word of prayer? Father God, Lord, I pray that your word has come to your people, wherever they may be, that they have heard your word today. And I pray, Father, that whomsoever would come, they come and make their decision and election sure. Please, Father, help them restudy these words. Help them review these messages. And help somebody, Father, send this message to somebody who needs to hear it. For you are coming. Everything is laid out. It's about to start raining. Help us get into that ark before it's too late. In Jesus' name, amen.